It is a privilege to be called Auntie Shelley. And not just at church. But when you go in the car park and you hear Auntie Shelley, that sounds good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. This morning, as we look at the overall theme, Heeding the Call, and this, I think, is the theme for the young people, Heeding the Call, I want to go back to the old rotary phones. You know, some of the younger people don't know about the dial-up phones. And they say that they look at the phone and it doesn't work. But remember those phones, you never knew who was calling. Remember back then? You didn't know who was calling, so you had to answer the phone. But then there came the, the other devices, and they had special ringtones. Remember the special ringtones? So you would know to put this ringtone to certain people, and I would like to think that they put the favorite ringtone so that you would make sure that you answer the call. <laughs> Or not. Nowadays, we have gone to call an ID. So we can look immediately and see who is calling. And if we are truthful, there sometimes we say, I'll pass that one. And therefore, the young people now have reached a stage where they don't even want anybody to call them. WhatsApp or send some other message by some other device. So when you see your mother calling, the question is, what she could want now? <laughs> Therefore, this morning, as we talk about heeding the call from God, I want us to be aware that the call may come at some inopportune times. The call from God may come at a time when we are not prepared or we are not sitting down and waiting for the call. But the call will come. The call will come. Young people, I want you to know this morning that the call is made even before you were born. God has called you into existence. And this morning, as my text, I want to look at Jeremiah chapter 1. And we are going to read some verses from there. And let me give you some background on Jeremiah. Jeremiah was the son of a priest. If I look here, God, I will tell you what the priest's name was. Hilkiah. He was the son of a priest. Now we already passed the living. We have some pastors in here, boy. I happen to share the burden of being one of the children of a pastor. So I have a little idea. Of how when we want to do what we want to do. How daddy and mommy are not quite in agreement with it. But here is Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah. And it goes on to say where he lives. But I want to read from verse 4 to verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and this is Jeremiah speaking, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, ah, good Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak. 
for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to do all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull out and to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. And I hope I will get to all three. But today, I want to talk to you about the call, the conversation, and the commission. When Jeremiah is talking about this call that he receives from the Lord... But the way the Lord introduces himself, he says, I form thee in the belly. Before I form thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knew us before he formed us. What does that mean? If you know that this is the machine that you will need, then you make it with the specifications that you need it for. Because let's look at it good. Before I formed you, I knew you. I have, when we look at Psalm 139, David says, before I was formed in my mother's womb, my parts were already written in your book. So God knows exactly everything that he created you to be. My nose is not an accident. My bony feet are not an accident. My other beautiful qualities are not accidents because I was formed, constructed, and designed according to the master's plan. God knew exactly why he was creating this person that was born in this place at this time and what he was sending me to do. So young people, when the call comes, in spite of the fact that you may think that you have other things to do, that you are really busy now, I got exams right now, don't be calling me now to tell me I have to do this. I want you to understand that before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew your circumstances, he knew your times, and he's calling you at the appropriate time. He didn't just form us. It says that before you came out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you. And that word sanctify means that I set you apart. I called you unto myself as holy. So therefore, even before Jeremiah or his parents knew him, you know, they got some of you that say, I know you before you born. The only body that knew me before I born was God Almighty. Because my parents would have had to take a little time to figure out who this person was. But he says, before you were born, I set you apart. I ordained you. I put a sheaf around you. When I went to university and I spent all of my time with a girl who was doing drugs and I recognized one day, my goodness, 
This girl was my best friend. You couldn't see Shelly without her, her without Shelly. And then I found out that nearly every day she went to smoke and she never invited me. She is the only person that I think in my life that I would have gone with at least to see what was happening. It was when university was finished that I had to say to myself, God, you have put a shield around me. God, indeed, it must have been you that set me apart. Young people, you're asking yourself, why did you born into this family? Why did you born into this church? Why, what is this call? What is this? The reason you are in this place is because God has ordained you. He has sanctified you. He has set you apart. It says also that before Jeremiah was born, he was ordained. Imagine that. You know what the ordination is? When the pastors have done their studies and the pastors come to say to the church, I have done all of that course and, you know, the, the, the leader puts their hands on them and say, you are dedicated. But here is that call to Jeremiah. Telling him, I form you, I sanctify you, and I ordained you. This is my time. And I'm calling you now. So that call that you will get from God is not a today call. That call was made before you were formed. God knows the plan that he has for your life. And young people, I was young too. All of these good people in here that you see look good and powerful and strong, they were young too. They had struggles too. They had some of the same thoughts that you are thinking now, even without technology. So when this call comes to Jeremiah, already he dealing with being a pastor's kid. And Jeremiah thought that this was just a bit too overwhelming. And Jeremiah said, look, look, I, I, Lord, man, don't, don't put no more for my dinner, I can bear. Look, look, I can't speak. You remember when the call went to Moses? Moses said, Lord, 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 you, you, you were going to mean somebody else because I, I really, really can't talk. So, so you, were going, you were going to say somebody, I, I, I can't talk. So Moses had a speech impediment that he was saying, well, you, you can't send me to talk to people. But when the call comes, the call comes. Now, sometimes the call comes when you are young, like how it came to David. And you got to go through a lot, a lot, a lot of turmoil before you get to the realization of it. Sometimes the call comes like it came to Saul. You know, in Acts, I, last night I read this and I was laughing. Chapter 8 in Acts, it said, and Paul wrecked havoc on the church. In chapter 9, it says, and Saul, that's sorry, let me call him Saul. And Saul breathed out threatenings in the church. And sent them all to jail. Chapter 9. But in chapter 9, on the road to Damascus. I tell you when the Lord is going to call you. He's going to get your attention. Whether you put down the phone or you decide that you are not answering. He's going to get your attention. And by chapter 9. Same chapter, Paul was changed, baptized, and preaching. Same chapter, converted, baptized, and preaching in one chapter. So when God calls you, he knows the appropriate time to call you. I like the fact. 
that Jeremiah didn't hide how he felt. We go into the conversation. Jeremiah tell the Lord, 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 you know that I can't talk. You know that I'm just a little boy. And I want to say to us, it is all right, young people. It is all right to tell God how you feel and what you think the reservations are. Because God knows exactly how to answer you. And I thank God that he answers. I will tell you when I was applying for the job that I am in now, before I applied for it, I had a mind that I could do the job. You know, you had a mind. One day I was passing on the corridor and I, a mind tell me you could do this job. But I was, I am an advocate for men in teaching. And when the opportunity came up, a mind said apply. And another mind said, all right, all right. But the more that I tried to play it down, the call was coming. So I took some time to talk to the Lord. Because I don't think that he was understanding who he was really calling. I said to him, Lord, you know how much other people you could get to do this job, though? And I list them out for him because I identify all the people in the workplace, especially the men that were there before, a good men. You know, we have two Wesleyan pastors on my staff, so I pointed them out to him. And I said, these are disciplinarians, and these are men, and, and all of this. And I was on the, the what the park, where the, out by Shafet, that, that long walk, where that boardwalk. I was out there by myself, and at that time, I was doing a devotional that I had missed two days. So I, I, I took a long time on the boardwalk to tell God about all of the reasons why he should look for a man to put in this job and look for all the other people who are really experienced. And so I explained that to him. So I said, all right, I can read the devotion that I missed two days ago. And that devotion was about the power of woman and how women can change. It's a, it's a bit, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. So I, I went by and I, I, I used to buy, but there's a lot of work, and I, I, I went on, but you don't understand me. This, 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 this is my strong point, being organized and thing. And then I read the next devotion. And it has something to do with about taking the first step. The longest mile is about taking the first step. I didn't have no more to quarrel, but I said, I said, I said all right, if you want me to send in the application, I will send in the application. So I sent in the application, and when I got through with the application, I went home and I breathed, and I said to myself, all right, good, I got that done. And then I get interview, good grief. I was there saying to myself, well, all he tell me to do is send in the application. Maybe they were going to dismiss it and say that I was not qualified. But I want you to know that God had orchestrated that. And good thing about it, let me tell you the good thing about God. He knew I wasn't ready yet. So he gave me a year. So when I went to the interview, I didn't get the job. And I went back home and said, And they said to me, you will not have to do another interview again in two years. But if a vacancy arises, you will go straight to the spot. So the Lord gave me a whole year to study, a whole year to reflect, a whole year to be trained. I'm saying that if you bring your argument to God, that God is going to give you some answers. When Jeremiah said to him, I cannot speak for I am a child. He says, say not that I am a child. And I want to speak to everybody today. Say not that I am too young. Say not that I am too old. Say not that I am not qualified. Say not that 
Do not put limitations on yourself that God has not put on you. Because who God calls, he anoints and he appoints. Who he appoints, he anoints. So, so, so Jeremiah was reprimanded a little bit by God and he said, listen, don't say, don't say that you are, 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 you're a child. For you will go where I tell you to go and I will command you what to say. If God gives you a job, just like he gave me this morning, he's going to tell me what to say. He's going to tell me what to say. There are so many times that you go into situations and you don't have a clue what you are going to say. But hallelujah, when you open your mouth, God fills it. God gives you the word and God tells you what to say. That is what it means to be called. That is what it means to answer that call. And then... My favorite part of this scripture. You see, God knows what it is you're afraid of. God knows what it is that you are afraid of. God will not just answer the question. He answered the question and tell him, don't be afraid. But the next thing, he went to the source. You know, when those crippled people were healed, what God said, your sins are forgiven you. Because he goes to the source of what's the real problem. And Jeremiah, God, God takes Jeremiah to the source and he says, Be not afraid of their faces. And when you stand up here, you could get a little afraid. When you are in the youth department and you are up here dancing and doing your thing, and making merry service unto God, if you look down at the faces, you could get afraid. But those are usually pleasant faces. But I want to talk to us church people. Us church people. Do that look, us. But bring it out up wide and say, us church people. When we look at the brother who not up here and our faces ring up, God have mercy on us. Because when that child sees you, even if you don't say anything, the child has seen your face. When the outfit ain't right and you, you come and, and, and they are going to look at you and tear you apart, sometimes... You don't say anything, but they can see the look on your face. And the look on your faces can cause pain. It can cause people to run away. We've come a long way in the church. We've come a long way. But there were some times and there were some people who said and did some things to young people. That made those young people feel that they would never come back to church. And all of us know what it is to be growing up. And the adult clothes don't fit you. Nor the children clothes don't fit you. And you are trying your best to survive. But the look on our faces can sometimes cause pain and discouragement to the young people. And here it was that Jeremiah may not have been in that position, but Jeremiah was being sent to speak the word of God. And it says he was being sent to pull down and to destroy. He was being sent with a word from God that was not all sweet. So chances are that when the people saw this young boy, and when I tried to find out, they said, Somewhere between 17 and the early 20s. Who is this young boy come to tell me what we could do and what we can do? It is easy to be afraid of their faces. 
But I thank God that he gives us confirmation and he builds our confidence. And he says to Jeremiah, do not be afraid of their faces because I am going to be with you and I am going to deliver you, says the Lord. Young people, older people, all of you people, I say today to you, do not be afraid. Do not seek the approval of people. Do not, be, do not feel good when they smile at you. Because sometimes they're smiling at you and they're ready to cut your throat. But you have to go on the power and the presence and the purpose of God. And if he has sent you, and if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has ordained you to walk in this path, I say to you, do not be afraid of their faces. Lastly, the commission. I would say, if I had to be the judge, that the Lord put a hard lump on Jeremiah from so early because when you read the account of his life and he's known as the weeping prophet and he talks about how many sermons he had to preach and the frustration it was not an easy road it was not an easy road but I thank God that where he commissions us where he sends us, where he anoints us to do ministry, that he is able to keep us, that he is able to strengthen us, that he is able to fortify us in our moments of weakness. And I say to you, speak the word. Thank God he says that the Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth. And said, I have put my words in your mouth. And today, I set you over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Young people, you are being charged today with the ministry of rebuilding. But there are some things that we are going to have to root out. Those things are difficult. Anybody will tell you when you go into an organization where there are principles that people have been following all the years and you are trying to go and implement change, it is frustrating and difficult. But I say to you today that the God of Jeremiah is going to strengthen you. The God of Jeremiah promises that he will not leave you or forsake you. The God of Jeremiah, as he called him and commissioned him and had a conversation with him, I want you to know that he will do the same for you. Let us pray. And today I'm going to ask all the young people in the house to stand. I think they used to say under 35, 35 and under, 35 and under, 35 and under. Lord, we give you thanks for our young people here at this church. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks. I see all of those up there standing all around the building. Oh, got some young ones up here too. Heavenly Father, today, we thank you for these young people who you have given to this church at Ellerton. We thank you, God, that before you formed them in their mother's belly, God, that you knew them. You knew their weaknesses. You knew their challenges. You knew, Lord, the decisions that they would make. But Father and God, we are glad that you have sanctify them 
and that you have ordained them to be ministers in this part of your kingdom and wherever else you will take them. And I pray today, God, that they will not be limited by anything that anybody will say or any look that anybody will give them, but that they will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they have been called by God most high and that they shall do those things that you have sent them and commissioned them to do. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to bless them, give them confidence. Oh, Father, I pray, God, that you would strengthen them in their moments of weakness. When they are uncertain, I pray, oh, God, that they will run to you. That they will talk to you. Oh, God, when even we as parents and, 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 and church don't understand, I pray, oh, God, that they will know that their voice can be heard with you. Father, I thank you for this church at Ellerton. I thank you for every member and every visitor. And I pray, oh God, that we would also recognize that we are not limited. And that if you call us, that you will anoint us and that you will prepare us for the task. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much.